Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another model kit building video where I'm going to build the AMT Ertl 1963 Chevy Impala SS model kit. Now I've owned this model since the 1990s and I have done an unboxing video of it which you can check up here. AMT Ertl under round two has just re-released this model kit as a four-in-one kit and they have put back the custom pieces. But with this model kit today, I am going to build it in the stock configuration. Now, as you see in the review, I have actually started to work on this kit. I've done some sub-assemblies. So I'm going to finish doing that and cleaning up all the flash, and then we'll proceed onward. Now when I was working on the chrome pieces of our 63 Impala cleaning them up, I noticed that there was a really bad chrome plating job in here, and this hole inside the wheel hub was so thick with uh, shellac and chrome bits that I had to take the 1 8th drill and actually go in and drill this out in the center by hand. And I was lucky that my drill chuck actually fit such a huge drill the little uh, hands thing there and then the other part is these pins don't really want to fit in either they're super tight and as I looked at this a little closer I noticed that uh, it was a little bit uneven on the pins so I had to actually use the drill press or the drill the electric drill and just uh, file them as I spun them so I'll show you how I did that next so here I've got our electric drill and I've got our little narrow file and the battery is pretty low on this, but that's the general idea. Now once that's done, we should be able to take this out. Now the little end here might be a bit thick right now, but this should actually go in a lot better. So if it's still a bit thick on the end, we'll just file the end and rotate it here just like that now it should go in a lot easier yeah I can feel that's a lot better so that's sort of one of the things I had to do with this now hopefully the newer one by round two is a bit better than the RC2 version that I'm working on here and that the pegs go in easier but always remember that you might just need to do these kind of things with your 1 8 drill and your electric drill. Now the other hole you have to drill is with a number 16 drill bit and that is for the axle into the top of the wheel. What I noticed again was that the chrome and shellac had dripped into the top so there was no way the metal axle was going to go in. So very carefully I just put the wheel there on the table like that and then I went straight in with the drill from the top making sure that I didn't go in crooked or something because you don't really want this wheel to be going like this in your axle. So I also noticed another thing. See there's the wheel back there and I think I got it pretty uh, pretty level. Here's the other thing I noticed with this. This axle is down in that wheel as far as it can go and uh, when I slip it through our differential here Okay, come on. Where's the hole? <laughs> Slipped it through the differential here. See how far it sticks out? Now with this other wheel on, you'll see that this is quite far away from the uh, edge of the wheel. So there's a lot of side play. You don't want that. You want this wheel to be very tight to the axle, maybe, uh, or the differential I mean, maybe just about a sixteenth of a millimeter open enough to put a business card in so uh, do I have one well I got this package of matches here for some reason so you really want your wheel to be like that so when you remove the pack of matches you have enough so that the play will only be a little bit that's so you can still spin your wheels. So I do have a replacement axle for this that's a little shorter. It was from the AMT64 Impala kit. But if you don't have one, you're going to have to get some side cutters or something and just snip this axle off just a little bit. And that's 
you're going to have to do that all by eye. So you can see it's uh, probably about a, I don't know if that's a quarter of an inch, maybe about an eighth of an inch. So you need to cut about an eighth of an inch off. Now remember the axle doesn't have to go all the way into the wheel to the very back. There's a lot of room in that shaft there just to, uh, you know, cut a little bit off and have some play room. So good luck. Now here you can see the shortened axle. This one came from the 64 Chevy Impala, also by AMT, and that's about what we want. So the wheel will go in like that, and then once I pull this one out of the other axle, <laughs> it should just be able to fit on there nice and tight. So here we go putting the wheel on the axle. Now you can go up tight onto there, but as you can see it doesn't really rotate well. So if I just wiggle this just a little bit, see if I can get the matches in there, or the packet, the, the cardboard. Just squeeze it up to the cardboard, remove the cardboard, and there you go. Now I think this is wobbling because the axle's gone in a little too far, so a way to correct that of course is just to put a little crazy glue on one of these, just go in a little bit, let the crazy glue dry, and then uh, once crazy glue is dry you can push the other wheel on and it should work. Now we're going to remove this because I've got to paint the undercarriage. Here's all our chrome parts cleaned up and ready to go. Now I did what the instructions said to do and I removed that 1963 raised lettering out of the grille and the rear bumper here as you can see and I think I did a pretty good job. So when I put my license plate in there I might have to paint the edges just a little bit with some silver, but the uh, plate will be glued right onto the bare plastic. I'm going to print up my own British Columbia plates for 1963, or maybe a year or two later, it all depends, and uh, just cut them out and glue them in there. So there's our grill. Now one thing we're going to do is take this tester's uh, gloss black paint, and I'm going to paint inside the back of the bumper and everywhere especially on here, all with that black, in case you can see up through the wheel openings into the chrome or anything like that. Just makes it more professional looking. Same with here on the rear bumper, all this will be painted with that black paint. And it uh, looks like I got to get rid of some of these little injector pins as well. But that'll all be hidden. And then on the back of the wheel plates, I think I'm also going to paint them with the gloss black. I might spray these when I spray the other components, which would make more sense, because I'm trying to build this as the stock version of the kit, so there's no sense in having chromed brake drums and everything else on the back. But overall, these wheels did clean up really nicely, and there's where I scraped the paint off. So when we glue it together, you'll get that nice plastic to plastic gluing contact. Here we have all our gray parts after the cleanup step. There's our hood, our body, our interior tub, the bucket seats, the seat belts, the steering wheel, the dashboard. We've got our air cleaner fan and pulley arrangement with the alternator molded on the back. Then I've built up the engine block with all its sub-assemblies, with the exception of these parts. And we've got our undercarriage here and our chassis. So this is going to be satin black. This is going to be satin black. This is going to be interior color. This is going to be exterior color. And our engine is going to be painted Chevy engine red. Now I'll just bring the engine up into the camera so you can see. So there's the transmission and engine glued together. I sanded down all the seam lines and smoothed that out as best I could with sandpapers. Starter motor is molded on the side. We've got our exhaust manifolds which plug in. The entire cylinder heads, intake manifold, carburetor, distributor, they are all molded as one piece. And then our valve cover is just plugged in on the top. And the water pump is part of the two-part engine assembly molded in front. Overall, though, that's what we're looking at. And with the air cleaner in, I did have to drill in a hole in here, just like with the axles, so that the air cleaner would sit nicely down, because it was really a tight fit. And same with the pulleys here. I had to drill holes into them, just so that everything would align up, and that the fan would go through. 
One thing about these AMT kits, both the 64 and 63 Impalas, do not have an alternator bracket coming out to align the alternator. So if you're into scratch building, you can always add that in just for more stability. Now here I'm showing two instruction sheets. This one on this side is from the original edition of the 1963 Impala. And this one is from our kit we're building now, which is the 1996 version. Now the first thing that's missing in here is the battery. As you can see, it is not included in the modern kit. And secondly, we are also missing the radiator, the firewall, and the horns and the brake master cylinder out of this kit, which was in the 63 version. But over here, there is nothing, and there's nothing else that refers to it in the instructions. So in order to correct this, I do have a spare firewall from a 64 Impala kit, and I'm going to have to go and search through my radiator box to see if I can find a radiator. The brake master cylinder doesn't really matter because one is molded on here, so that's good. But I will have to make some adjustments so that I'm able to put the hood on because the hood has little tabs. One thing I could do is cut the tabs off and just simplify everything. Or I could actually cut into the firewall with my saw from behind, marking where the little divots are for the hood to fall into, and then gluing it that way, which would be better because then I still have the little hood tabs on the hood, or the hood hinges. So I managed to find a radiator in my parts box and after uh, doing a lot of extensive modifications to it because it had a little thing that overhung so it was supposed to hook onto the rad support so I clipped that off and I used my sandpaper block and sanded this all flat had to clean up the sides because this was from a glue bomb <laughs> so I had to get rid of the glue but it does seem to fit down there pretty nicely touches the top of the fan, which is just how you want that fan, sh fan shroud to be on there. And then when I close the hood up, I've got it so that it doesn't interfere with the hood. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it ended up pretty nice. All I need to do now is just, I think I'm going to glue that uh, red. <laughs> Actually, I might paint this separately. Yeah, I think I'll do it that way. Okay, so I'll get all this prepped up and get it ready to paint. So what I have up top is a firewall from the AMT-64 Impala because my 63 does not have a firewall. The firewall down below is the one from the new AMT 4-in-1 kit from round 2. So you got RC2 at the top, round 2 at the bottom. I'm going to uh, lay the firewalls on top of each other and I need to trim down the red and black one here so that it will fit underneath the uh, 63 body. So that's what I'll do. I'll just take the saw and chop it just like it is here, just for simplicity of size and everything. As you can see, this one's a bit flatter than this one, but hopefully things will make up the difference under there and look good in the end. All right, so I got that red firewall and I chopped it down and uh, it's just sitting in here loose. But as you can see, it actually does fit in there pretty well. I know it's black back there, it's hard to see it. Uh, it will have to come forward a little bit and be glued to the front underneath of the cowl here. And the cowl would be painted with the semi-gloss black as well. I'm not really sure if I should paint this thing separate on its own and then just do the touch-up along the top if that would be easier. Or to glue the firewall into the, um, into the car here and then paint it black with a brush probably spray. So this turned out pretty good considering that these were missing parts, both the firewall and the radiator, which is back on the other table. So I think this is going to work out pretty nice. And uh, I was lucky to actually have a spare firewall, because without one this would just be wide open in here, and that wouldn't look good at all. So I'm glad actually that my kids got me the new AMT version of the 64 Impala so that I had some reference to go off of with the other one. And yeah, as you can see here, I sawed this flat across the edge and sanded it down just like the other uh, firewall was because this curved out there and there and that was hitting in underneath here. So again, this should look really good. All right, I think that's finally all the parts I needed to do except for the battery in here, which is uh, pretty simple, actually. I have some spares from that battery video that's up here. So uh, I'm going to paint it. 
Well, it's been a pretty good day so far. I've been able to spray paint everything in this model, which is good. I don't usually get to do that. It's usually a little here, a little there, wait a while, blah, blah, blah. But uh, all I really have to spray paint now is the car body and I'll let that dry. So what I'll do is I'll just go woo, and then we'll be into next week coming up here where everything's going to be dry and we're going to start painting on the final bits. Here we have all our satin black components which I have taped onto this cardboard box using some masking tape. And what I do is I take a piece of masking tape off and I just roll it over on itself and then stick it down here with the sticky side out. You can just push all the parts on there and that'll hold it in place while you paint. So I have spray bombed these with our satin black. There's our air cleaner. Now this is stuck in a reversed clothes peg as you can see. That's our air cleaner. Looks pretty nice. Also got our fan right here. And then our belts and pulleys over here. So what I did is I spray painted these with my hand like this with the glove on. And then when they were still wet I just put them down on here. But these other components have been taped in. There's our uh, radiator with the fan shroud and the firewall in the back. And these easily just peel off the tape. And there you go. Now, I do believe I'll have to use a brush and just cover this over with some of that trim clad, or sorry, testers gloss black. But overall, you can see just how wonderful this turned out. Uh, now, I will spray uh, this way and then turn it and go this way, turn it this way, spray paint this way, and then spray paint this way again and then give it a one or two, you know, over the top. Just so if any overspray comes up over here, it will melt with the final coat going over the top. And I also will tip the box forward and spray paint, you know, with this at an angle, you know, downward. <laughs> so that's how it looks. Let's take a look at some of the other parts I painted up. So here's our Chevy 409 after painting it with the Chevrolet engine orange. You can see just how nice this actually did turn out. Now the paint here is still pretty wet, but what I'll do is I will paint the tips of the exhaust manifolds with the steel color or the aluminum, whatever I painted underneath, and uh, paint the distributor flat black and the starter motor as well with some white spark plugs. I did notice that I might have painted this with the wrong orange. I think this might be a Chrysler engine orange, like Hemi orange or something. I'm not sure because the spray paint I used was an engine match enamel color. And it said, uh, look for the true color on the cap, which of course the cap got lost. So I don't know what it was. But one thing I did notice is these valve covers are actually supposed to be aluminum in this year of car. So I'm going to have to find my aluminum paint and go in and brush them over. And the intake manifold on some of these Chevys is also aluminum, but I think I will leave it the orange since I've already done that. So if I was to build this engine again, I would leave the valve covers off and hook them with those uh, clothes pegs like I did with the air cleaner and then spray them with aluminum or yeah, I guess spray them with aluminum would be the best bet. So the other things is, of course, the distributor is going to be gloss black and all the rest. I think I said that before. So that was just an observation that I made. And there's two little black tags. One says uh, 409 and one says the horsepower of the engine. And they go on top of the Chevy logo. Uh, one's on top, one's on the bottom down here. Now check out this color on this seat. This is Trem Clad Gloss Sand. And it sure does look nice, doesn't it? Now all I need to do is let this dry and then I can put the chrome around the seat, which is on this, uh, this back right there. There, you can see that nice ridge. Now this paint is enamel and it's gloss, so it's gonna take about a week to dry. So luckily though, you're not gonna have to wait a week to see the results. Here we have our interior, which is painted in that trim clad sand color. I'm really happy with this color, how it turned out. There's our seats and our interior bucket and tub and our dashboard, the seat belts and the steering wheel. 
Now this color really looks like the original Chevy color, which looks like this. And that's how I want to do that interior, just to make it all look nice. What I need to do is I need to get some of the tester's sand, the flat sand. I think it's 1168. I don't have a bottle here to correct that with. But uh, I will paint the seatbelts with the sand, and the clip buckles are actually supposed to be this glossy color. The carpet in here will also be painted with the sand. It's going to go up and around this console. And I do believe a lot of the console on here is aluminum, or if not chrome. And then I've got the floor pedals, which will be painted black. And uh, I guess that's about it. And then there will be chrome details in here, like the SS logo in the center of the seat. And some of this will be hand painted. Others, I think I'll try to use bare metal foil, which uh, is that nice foil project. If you want to see bare metal foil, check out the link up here. Should be scrolling across for our tips and techs. And then, of course, our bare metal foil has to go up and around in a strip on this edge of the seat, just like in that picture. And here we have the body and the hood, which I have also painted in the sand color. And this is such a neat color, actually. I do like it. Look at how uh, great that is. Isn't that great? Don't you love it? Come on, you love it. You know it. Okay, so there it is there. Look at how nice it came down. This is just uh, one coat, no primer. I did not use primer. Can you believe that? That's like a model kit building sin. So. No, I don't know. Anyway, what I need to do next is I need to paint the firewall or the pardon me, the radiator support wall in here with the gloss black paint or semi gloss, just like it came from the factory. And uh, then I need to use the bare metal foil. And I just happen to have a sheet of it here. The bare metal foil just to go in on all the trim in along here and make all that look nice. So Oh, and the other thing is, this panel, in a lot of them, is aluminum. I do believe that was in the Bel Airs, in the lower class models, like the Biscantine, Bis 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 whatever. <laughs> they did not have it, so um, there we go. But overall, I'm really impressed with how this paint turned out. I'm going to leave this body for a few more days, which of course is nothing in your time, just to make sure that the paint is nice and solid and dry before I start doing bare metal foil on it. But again, like I said, if you want to see the bare metal foil video, it is up top in the little... If you click on that, it'll drop down and show you all the videos, so just click on the bare metal foil one. And for our hood, we actually have a texture in between the ribs on the underside, which indicates that there would be a fireproof mat underneath here. So all this area has to carefully be painted with flat black, just to represent that matting. But on top of the hood, it came out really nice for our paint again. We also have the Chevy emblem up front, which will need to be touched in with a fine brush and some silver paint. I really like that sand color because it matches my socks. Here we have our Chevy 409 after doing all the detail painting. So what I've painted here is the valve covers are aluminum, the carburetor underneath there, let's see, underneath there is steel. Then we've got the semi-gloss satin black for our air cleaner, our fan, and our pulleys. Now this isn't a generator. This is a generator, not an alternator. And generators are also painted with uh, satin black. So I've used gloss black from testers for that distributor and the starter motor. And I notice the starter motor doesn't actually touch into the bell housing. So again, another sort of AMT flaw. There's the white spark plugs on there. And then I've got the steel on the bottom. I painted the flange halfway so that there's still some orange touching the steel. Now, one thing I did notice on the uh, Chevy engine block in the photo is that these manifolds are also steel. However, from the factory, they may have been painted. The thing is, these get really hot, so any paint that's on there usually gets burnt right off. So they would appear steel after, you know, maybe a couple of miles around the town. But overall, I think this is actually one of the better engines that I've actually painted, even though it's missing a lot of things. Now, if you wanted to super detail this engine, 
I would suggest putting in the radiator hoses. There's an oil breather that's supposed to be up here. Actually, an oil filler that's supposed to be up here. Uh, some of the valve covers had oil breathers on them. And then there'd be a lower radiator hose up in the front. But like I said, I mean, this is meant to be simplistic. One other thing is to scrape the paint off the pins. There's one here. And on your frame, your chassis, this engine is also going to sit in here and here. So use your drill and just drill out the paint just so that you've got that plastic to plastic surface. And the other thing is do not glue your engine in right away. Make sure you got those front wheels with those pins on because that's going to be very difficult to try to stick in after the fact of your motor being glued down. And speaking of the frame here, you can see just how detailed it is. Underneath, if I turn it over this way, there's all our exhaust pipes and muffler system. And I painted this with Tester's Steel. The only downside is that my steel paint is really chunky, so I had to thin it. And I was running some over the edges here just because I got the consistency a little wrong when I was mixing. But I managed to touch up the edges with the gloss black, and you can't even tell the difference. Back here is our fuel cell, which is also painted steel. And remember, the gas tank here is sitting vertically up and down instead of horizontal. So this area back here is actually a sunken area in the trunk. I'm not sure if you put your spare tire in there, but uh, it is sunken. If you take a look at some of the open trunk images on the internet, you'll see exactly what I mean. And getting into the rear axle here, I haven't actually put the uh, tires and wheel on yet, but I wanted to show you how this actually looks. So here I've got like very slight side-to-side -side play in that rear axle, and the wheels will spin perfectly in here. So again, it is nicely done. If I just turn this over this way, you can see the black painted axle inside. That'll just prevent it from rusting but uh, it isn't interfering with it actually spinning. What you would use is, again, your drill just to knock off a bit of the paint inside the axle where the hole is here on that differential so that uh, your wheels can spin freely and are not being slowed down by any paint. You want to sort of do the same thing right here in the front just to knock off a little bit of that paint. And like I said before, remember to put in those wheels in the front before you actually put that motor in. Oh, and one other thing, when you're looking at the interior bucket, this of course is going to be sitting here on the chassis. So if we flip it over, you want to make sure that you're going to paint up in front here with the gloss black so that this is actually hidden. So that's what we will do. So basically from these front two dots where the seats are going to be, if you uh, paint gloss black from about here up and into the tunnel a bit just again so that when you're looking at this from underneath you don't see the uh well where you haven't painted because that doesn't look really professional if you have intentions of entering this in a model car show again that's gonna show like that and nothing's gonna hide that that bald area so always paint that over so that nobody sees it Here's my mock-up of the chassis with the engine. It's just pressed into place right now. It's not glued down. There's our front and back wheels. Now, I don't know if I'm going to put the white walls on here or just leave them as a black wall. Black wall was kind of a cheaper tire back in the day. But then again, it also has a sort of air of sportiness to it. You can see that I haven't painted the hubcaps yet. That's coming up. But overall, the fit is pretty good. There's only one discrepancy, is that those exhaust pipes don't actually hook up to the exhaust manifold. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, yeah, that's sort of the flaw. And then where it's chrome in the front there, I'm going to paint that over with the gloss black so it looks like what's in the back. Here's our Impala body after I painted on the black up front and the aluminum into the back. I still have to put it on the bare metal foil, but I just wanted to show you that you make sure that you paint that headliner in there before you start putting the whole body and everything together. Overall, this will look good. I need to scrape off the paint once it's dry right in that area to attach our radiator. 
and I need to put a second coat of aluminum in there just to thicken it up a little bit but that's basically what you want to go for just before we put on that bare metal foil. Another thing I noticed is that in the pictures of the real Chevys this little area here is actually still body color. It is not painted gloss black like I thought it was but the uh, gloss black firewall does hang underneath. Here's our interior bucket painted up to a point. I just wanted to show what the paint color was. This is Tester's Flat Tan 1167. That's what I've used for in the carpet here. And then I've used my gloss black on the pedals. And up in the front, like I was showing from before, this area is going to be silver and same as on the door panels, a bunch of the trim and whatnot. I just have to take another look at the reference picture and see how it's actually applied. Here's the completed interior bucket. And as you can see, I've got that dashboard in there and the seats and the seat belts. Bare metal foil going up and around the seats there. The rest is all hand painted. That is Tester's Silver, the old Model Master stuff. Now on the seat belts, I added a little bit of a brown wash onto there just because they really didn't have much definition like the carpet has. So uh, I wanted to just to muck them up a little bit. I couldn't figure out what color that SS logo is down on the floor. But this is pretty much, well, just like the two illustrations that I had before. The one picture of the real tan interior and then the artist drawing version of it. Then underneath I've got it painted black. The only thing I don't like about the seats in this kit is that they don't really glue to the floor itself. They have these pins which go through and of course one busted off in the back here and uh, that's never any good. But overall this will look really cool once it gets down on that chassis and when we can see it inside the actual car. Here we have our completed 1963 Chevy Impala from the older AMT kit and here I've got actual printed British Columbia license plates just like the ones you'll find up here on that tutorial video. I also painted in the Chevy emblem on the hood and the little turn signal lamps. I used that uh, wash technique, which we will take a look at right there, for the front grille. Now the hood does sit up just a little bit, and I think the reason for that is because of my uh, little radiator cap right in here. And that is a little unfortunate. I'd, I could try to relieve the underneath of the hood a little bit. The other thing I noticed with this is that the front bumper is really, really tight onto the body. I actually scraped a bit of the paint trying to get it on underneath. So um, that was sort of a drawback. And I noticed that it also doesn't quite go up to the very top of that fender. And I'm not quite too sure why. I did have to really, uh, you know, clip and rig that thing in, but this is the best I could do with the old kit. So there's the black wall tires. I was debating on putting white walls on there, but eh, I don't know. It does kind of give it more of a, you know, like a pedestrian civil, uh, civilian type of look, I guess I'm trying to say. I did paint inside here with the wash again. I was going to do the SS emblems. They're actually red but I didn't really get around to it. There's the emblem on the side I painted. The Impala back here, I painted it solid silver in that circle, and then I realized that was kind of a mistake. It's supposed to have the uh, paint through it. It's supposed to be a ring with S's in the center, but oh well. <laughs> Here's a back end coming around. Now I did use the Tester's aluminum in here, and then I painted it with the Tester's chrome silver. There is a bit of a difference. See, if you look at the door latch button, and then we've got our emblem on the back, which again was hand painted, and the duplicate BC license plate. BC license plate really turned out nice. It gives it that historical, you know, close to home feel. I grew up in British Columbia and moved out to Alberta. So uh, that's like sort of coming home. The Alberta plate for 64 was just black and white, which wasn't quite as exciting as the blue. There's our fuel door. Remember, our gas tank is in the back. Now, sorry, I had a little trouble with the uh, alignment of our video. So trying to move this when you turn it to get it perfect in the 
in the circle there. But you can see I painted the door handles. That's with the uh, Tremclad or Tester's aluminum paint in there, painted along the bottom edge. Although you can't really see it with aluminum or the chrome. Same with the window pillars. I found that with the windows, I did try to bare metal foil around here. My bare metal foil seems to be sort of thicker. So it's kind of chunking. My blade isn't quite as sharp as it probably should be. So I painted down here on the bottom with the silver paint and that actually ended up being a lot better. So I'll take the hood off and we can take a look inside. There's our engine bay with a great 409 painted with the Chevy engine red. You can see my radiator in there with the cap on top and in the back there's a firewall and the windshield washer bottle. Now the bottle should actually be on the other side of the radiator, but you know, what can we do? I was going to put a battery in there, just right about here, but the problem is that I have to cut a big half circle out of the battery in order for it to fit up against that wheel well. So I don't know, I started to run out of time with that, so maybe I can fiddle with that in the future. Uh, as we move across here we can get a little bit of the interior. You can see the seat belts on the seat and that wonderful steering wheel and dashboard. Overall, I did have fun building this, even though I had to really pirate parts from other kits just to get that radiator and the firewall back there. But overall, I think I did a pretty good job. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Here's our Chevy from underneath. You can see all the nice detail work, the gas tank, the ends of the exhaust pipes, the exhaust system and our engine sitting underneath there. Well, I hope you enjoyed my build of the AMT Ertl 1963 Chevy Impala SS. And if you want to see me unbox this kit, don't forget to check it out up here. And until next time, if you want to find a good Chevrolet model kit to build, check out our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I'll leave a little button down here somewhere so you can click on it toward the end of the video. And next time, we want to see you in a Chevrolet. Okay, so happy model building. And now a word from Danny the dog. Thank you everybody for watching our model car unboxing video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And if you really want to show your support, click that join button right below this video. Until next time everyone, happy model building!